A striking fact of urban geography is that despite large reductions in trade and communication costs, economic activity is still highly concentrated in cities and industrial clusters. This is due in part to the enduring role of knowledge spillovers. Geographic proximity spurs innovation by facilitating technology and information transfer between co-located firms. But what are the precise mechanisms that give rise to these spillovers? This paper isolates a particular channel and shows that serendipitous face-to-face -face meetings between workers give rise to knowledge flows between their employers. The focus is on Silicon Valley. For many decades, this area has been the major engine of both US and global innovation, and there is a long-standing idea that frequent face-to-face -face interactions and the knowledge flows that result from them have been instrumental in cementing its status as a dominant tech hub. To assess this empirically, the authors link rich data on worker interactions to patent citations between their employers. First, they measure face-to-face -face interactions using highly granular smartphone geolocation data. Workers are assigned to establishments based on where they, and their phones, spend a large fraction of their waking hours, and instances in which two smartphones are in the same place at the same time are used to measure the likelihood that workers from one establishment meet those from another. As a concrete example, consider workers employed at the Apple and Google headquarters. This figure overlays smartphone pings from both sets of workers between September 2016 and November 2017. Darker shades indicate areas with more pings, and narrowing down to instances in which workers from both establishments were in the same place at the same time yields the following set of locations. These include the establishments themselves, but also shopping centers, restaurants, schools, golf clubs, and apartment complexes. These data are used to calculate the probability that an Apple and a Google worker meet, and a similar process yields meeting probabilities vis-a-vis -vis workers at other establishments. Here, establishments in darker shades have higher meeting probabilities with Apple workers, while those in lighter shades have lower ones. Meeting probabilities are calculated for each pair of Silicon Valley establishments, then linked to patent application data that track citation links between firms. The goal is to assess whether establishments whose workers happen to meet each other more often also cite each other more often. But there is a problem. Many of the meetings observed in the data are likely planned. For example, if workers at one establishment are developing an idea and come across a relevant patent from workers at another, they may arrange a meeting to learn more. In this case, the citation itself generates the meeting rather than the reverse. To address this and to isolate the impact of meetings in which workers serendipitously run into one another, the authors measure face-to-face -face interactions between workers at adjacent establishments that are in unconnected industries that neither cite nor supply one another. Again, take the example of Apple and Google. The idea is that these interactions reflect planned meetings as well as chance encounters determined by the distribution of amenities, housing, and transportation between the two locations. And because adjacent unconnected establishments share the same meetings geography, while having no plausible reason for planned interactions, variation in their likelihood of meeting helps pick out this second kind of interaction. 
And so the paper compares the citation behavior of establishment pairs that are equally far apart in terms of physical distance and worker demographics, but that have different meetings geographies separating them as measured by the meeting probabilities of their unconnected neighbors. And the results show that face-to-face -face meetings significantly increase citations between establishments with the strength of the effect twice the impact of physical distance on citations. Eliminating a quarter of face-to-face -face meetings in Silicon Valley would reduce the number of citations by approximately 8%, which is similar in magnitude to the estimated effect of being in a different city. Note, the conjecture here is not that meetings between strangers lead to collaboration. Rather, the idea is that the density and frequency of interactions in Silicon Valley increase the probability of chance encounters between existing acquaintances and these spark conversations that lead to knowledge transfer. So, what does this mean for the shift to remote work? Spurred by COVID-19, many Silicon Valley employers have permanently transitioned to working from home, which has raised concern over the impact on innovation. Consistent with this, the authors estimate that if one quarter of the office workers in their data worked from home instead, face-to-face -face meetings would fall by 17% and citations by 5.2%. If half of workers worked from home, meetings would fall by 35% and citations by nearly 12%. Thus, this paper provides evidence that face-to-face -face interactions substantially increase knowledge flows between firms and sheds light on a precise mechanism through which geographic proximity spurs innovation. These findings have implications for a wide range of policy questions, including the cost of remote work and the optimal design of urban spaces. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. This includes research on agglomeration, knowledge spillovers, and the role of face-to-face -face interactions.